there are two of the most famous trophy properties in Australia. Nestled in Sydney's coveted eastern suburbs with their panoramic harbour views, grand verandas and furnishings just oozing largesse. And it turns out that both were sold to dodgy Chinese buyers. They're now Exhibit A in a high-profile crackdown by the federal government, eager to show that it's on the job. We want to see integrity uh, in the foreign investment system in Australia. That's reassuring for Australian investors and it's reassuring for the general public. A Fairfax investigation found that Altona in Sydney's Point Piper sold for $52 million, not to an elderly couple from Melbourne, but to a Chinese property developer, Wang Jijun, who concealed his identity in the sale. Just a stone's throw away is the Point Piper mansion Villa del Mare, which another Chinese developer, Zhu Jiayin, was forced to dispose of for just $39 million in March. In that case, the divestment order was issued, uh, but under our new regime, uh, if you provide support uh, and advice to an individual in, so that they can avoid proper detection of their nationality, uh, you too can be fined. Mansions like Altona are certainly not affordable for your average buyer. But in Sydney today, Treasurer Joe Hockey kicked off a war of words, telling reporters if housing in Sydney is unaffordable, no one would be buying. And with this advice for first home buyers. The starting point for a first home buyer is to get a good job that pays good money. And if you've got a good job and pays good money and you have security in relation to that, uh, that job, then you can go to the bank and, and, and you, can, you can borrow money and that's uh, uh, readily affordable. But while that debate rages, increasingly the spotlight is on policing of property investment. Around half of the housing market is propped up by investors. That jumps to 60% in Sydney and the value of their new loans grew another 2.6% in April, according to official figures. And while lending regulator APRA announced guidelines six months ago to cap aggressive lending growth, it's only now starting to enforce them. Business reporter Michael Yander has been investigating. So, congratulations, guys. Well bought. How do you stop a runaway train without derailing it? Done. Madam, welcome to Terry Street. That's APRA's challenge as it tries to single-handedly rein in a white-hot Sydney housing market. Last December, it tested the brakes by announcing tighter lending standards. But only now does it seem to be pushing firmly on the pedal to slow investor home loans. We've seen uh, quite big changes ring through in the last three to four weeks, uh, not really so much before then. Most lenders have now accepted APRA's tougher stress tests. The regulator prefers a 7% interest rate floor when deciding whether borrowers can handle future rate rises, causing some banks to lift their tests by a full percentage point. Typically you may have had a benchmark that was maybe 150 to 200 basis points above the variable home loan rate and if you said in practical terms that meant something like, you know, 65 6 to 6.5%. The big four and smaller lenders have also tightened income tests. That means not counting 100% of rental income and bonus pay and looking at borrowers' actual spending, not just using a standard poverty line benchmark. Late last week, ING Direct went further. It made New South Wales a special case, telling brokers it wouldn't accept investor loans for more than 80% of the property's value. Anywhere else, 90% is the limit. It also joined a large number of banks cutting interest rate discounts. We've seen um, an approach across the board from the vast majority of lenders where discounts that were otherwise um, applied to um, investment lending are being removed. That's going to have an impact um, across the market. But APRA only regulates authorised deposit taking institutions such as banks, credit unions and building societies. A raft of mortgage finance companies can largely set their own standards. And John Flavell says many customers who can't get a loan through his brokers are going to them. But history has shown us that when you restrict access to conventional um, finance and credit, 
consumers then go and find it elsewhere and the level of risk to them increases. Bruce Carr isn't just worried about cowboy lending companies, he's also heard evidence of rogue behaviour within bank branches. Many mortgage brokers have stories where they've assessed that a loan would not be in the interest of a borrower and then they've gone down to the local branch of the bank and the bank has written the loan. The incentive-based model that got the big banks in trouble over dodgy financial planning also exists for home loans. That means the culture at the coalface may not reflect the standards set at head office. At the branch level, um, they're setting quite aggressive sales targets to their loans officers, often linked to bonus and incentive payments, and that's where the opportunity for poor practices and over-aggressive lending can come in. It's not just banks where poor practices can occur. Over the past five years, the corporate regulator ASIC has banned, fined or jailed 60 mortgage brokers found guilty of loan fraud, generally creating fake documents to support applications and sometimes creating fictitious borrowers. Another 22 are under investigation. There are more cases than certainly you'd want to see but we don't think it represents, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, a big part of the industry. But ASIC's warning that risk is rising, as tighter lending standards mean more borrowers get rejected by reputable brokers and lenders. Especially in this current environment, where people are seeking larger amounts of credit in, in a pretty uh, hot property market, um, the temptation is always to go for a larger amount and I think uh, the broking industry is not going to do itself any favours if it's not policing its own. As the head of one of Australia's largest mortgage broker networks, John Flavell welcomes the scrutiny. And if you didn't sort of find anybody operating at the fringe to their own benefit, <laughs> would you really believe that everybody was doing the right thing 100% of the time? Would you? The key question is how many lenders are bending the rules, pouring more fuel onto Australia's real estate fire. We're going, quickly, going. Salt, congratulations, great, well done.